An 81 kilogram man is traveling in a car at 115.2 kilometers per hour. Find his kinetic energy. Okay, so we have a man traveling in a car. So let's draw that man traveling in a car. And we don't need to write the car because the question involves the man. Okay. There he is driving in a car and he is traveling at 115,2 kilometers per hour. And the first question asks us simply to calculate his kinetic energy. Okay, so kinetic energy, a very simple formula. The kin formula for kinetic energy is half his mass times his velocity squared. Now his mass, we saw 81 kilograms, but his velocity is given in kilometers per hour. We know by now that we need to work with meters per second, which is easy to convert. We multiply with a thousand, divide with three thousand six hundred, and what do we get? Well, we get one one five point two times one thousand divided by three thousand six hundred gives me 32, that's a beautiful answer, 32, it's traveling at 32 meters per second. Okay, now with that in mind, we can substitute into our formula, which is a half mass of 81, so that's the kinetic energy, a half mass of 81 times the velocity, 32, that is squared. Okay, so Typing that in, we have 0.5 times 8 to 1 times 32 squared, and we get 41,472. 41,472. Remember what energy is measured again? Yeah, it's measured in joules. Let's go to the second part of this question. Okay, the second part, a little bit more difficult. The car strikes a concrete wall. Oh dear. Okay, the car strikes a concrete wall Ooh, okay. um, and comes to rest after the front of the car has collapsed 0 0.5 meters. Okay, so the front of the car okay, is able to collapse, in other words, just being scrunched up for 0 0.5 meters. The man is wearing a seatbelt and a harness. What is the average force exerted by the seatbelt and the harness during the crash? So what is happening? This guy is going to rest. In other words, his velocity is soon going from 32 meters per second down to 0 meters per second. Now we know that when an object's motion is changed or its shape or uh, its direction, a force is exerted on him and the force exerted here causes a deceleration. Okay, and we need to go and calculate that force. Now since we're using uh, the energy principle, the work energy principle, that is what we're going to use. Okay, now what is the work energy principle? We'll remind ourselves, okay, the net work done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Okay, that's simple enough. And the net work done is the net forces acting on an object okay, times the displacement um, over which it is operating at times cause of the angle between the displacement and the net force. Okay. The change in kinetic energy is simply the kinetic energy before or after minus the kinetic energy initially. Okay, and we have all these values. Okay, except for the net force, that's what we're trying to calculate. So F is what we're trying to calculate. We know that the displacement is simply that if this car scrunched up for 0 0.5 meters, then this man is not traveling any more uh, than 0 0.5 meters because he's wearing a seatbelt. So that is simply 0 0.5 meters because obviously the force is exerted in the opposite direction as the um, displacement. Well, why do I say that? Well, remember okay, that the displacement 
is from here to there okay it's in the forward direction however the force exerted by the seat valve belt is in the opposite direction because it's stopping him okay it is causing a deceleration which simply means it's in the opposite direction which means that our angle here is a hundred and eighty degrees okay the angle is a hundred and eighty degrees what is the change in the kinetic energy while well, he's coming to rest which means his kinetic energy in the end sorry in the end his final kinetic energy must be zero okay how about his initial kinetic energy well that's what we worked out in the previous question okay the kinetic energy he had while he was traveling at 32 meters per second okay so that's the man's kinetic energy okay which was calculated before 41472 joules now with that in mind we can go ahead and solve this so we find that F times 180 is negative 1 uh, sorry cos of 180 is negative 1 so we have negative 1 times a half so we have negative a half okay is equal to on the right hand side negative 4147 2. So if we divide this with negative a half on both sides, which is very lovely that the negatives cancel, and we find that the size of our force is equal to, I'm trying to do this in my head, let's see if I get it right, 8, 3, no, 8, 2, 8, 2, 9, 44 newtons. <laughs> I think I'm right. Okay, how about you test me? Okay, there we go. 82,944 newtons. That's the force that this seatbelt is exerting on the man. So let's go and fill in only part B. Part A is quite easy. Okay, the car strikes a concrete wall and comes to rest this question. Okay, so which are the two formulas that we used? They say select two formulas that apply to this question. Well, you can notice here that we use the formula that net force, uh, the uh, net force done is equal to force times displacement times cos of the angle between them. That's this one. Okay, so we use this one as well as the fact that the net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy. That's this part. So those are the two formulas that we used. What were the values? Well, we worked out the, um, you can put in the amount of work done if you want to. Okay, the force is what we have to calculate. We know that is 0 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5. Then we know that the angle between them was 180 degrees. Okay, kinetic energy, here we don't have the change in kinetic energy, that's what we calculated here. Okay, the change in kinetic energy, that was 0 minus 41, in other words, that is negative 41472. Okay, that's what we calculated. What else did we have here? Oh, the mass of the man was 81. However, that didn't really come into play in this question. Okay, so have we placed in all of the values? It seems like we did, yes. Okay, all of the values looks like we did fill in all of those. Okay, so what did our substitution step come to? Okay, using F for force, ignoring subscripts, force times 0.5, sorry, 0 0.5 times cos of 180 degrees is equal to 0 minus 414. 72. Preview. Perfect. And our final answer, we worked out that the force was equal to, let's just show that, 82,944 newtons. <laughs> that is a lot of force. Okay, I'm glad I'm not that guy. Drive safe, guys.